In this video, let's take a look at this concept of a one-sided confidence interval. Let me assume that the parameter of interest is population mean mu. I don't know mu, but I do know the sample based estimate of mu and let's call it mu hat. Let the standard error of mean be given by this guy. If I do know the standard deviation of all members of my population, let's call it sigma, then standard error of mean is very simply sigma that divided by square root of n, where n is my sample size. Let me assume that I am able to fulfill all those assumptions because of which in the end I can assume that mu hat follows a normal distribution. Okay? As far as building of confidence intervals is concerned, let me assume that I am working with a confidence level C or equivalently a significance level alpha given by 1 minus C. Okay? To understand one-sided confidence intervals, let's very quickly recap the usual two-sided confidence interval. For population mean mu, the two-sided confidence interval based on this sample estimate mu hat would be given by this guy. The lower limit is very simply start with the point estimate mu hat, move to the left and hence a minus these many multiples of the standard error. To get the upper limit, again start with the point estimate mu hat, this time move to the right and hence a plus these many multiples of the standard error. Please note that since I assumed that I will be working with the normal distribution, I have picked these multiples, actually it's the same multiple from the standard normal distribution. The notation Z sub 1 minus alpha by 2 is that quantile picked from the standard normal distribution which leaves an area 1 minus alpha by 2 to its left. Essentially, remember that the two-sided confidence interval is a two-tailed concept and I am leaving an area alpha by 2 in the left tail and an area alpha by 2 in the right tail. And that is why I am working with Z corresponding to 1 minus alpha by 2. Please note that the practical interpretation of this two-sided confidence interval is that I am this much confident that my population mean mu will lie between this lower limit and this upper limit. Okay? Now, please note that in practice, there are cases wherein we only want to work with a single limit, either the lower limit or the upper limit. And that is where we encounter a one-sided confidence interval. Let's start by taking a look at that one-sided confidence interval in which we only have the lower limit. That means the upper limit is set to infinity. Okay? So in this one-sided confidence interval which only works with the lower bound, the lower bound can be calculated very simply using the same logic and that is start with your point estimate that is mu hat, move to the left and hence a minus these many multiples of the standard error. Please note that the multiple has changed. Because we are now working with a one-sided confidence interval, I will not be splitting my significance level alpha into alpha by 2 in the left tail and alpha by 2 in the right tail. In this situation, I will be placing the entire alpha in the left tail. Okay, and that is why I am working with this multiple which is Z corresponding to 1 minus alpha. Okay, now how do we interpret this one-sided confidence interval? The practical interpretation goes like this. I am this much confident that my population mean mu is at least this lower bound this lower limit that we have calculated. 
okay now very quickly you can guess this that there is one more possibility when it comes to the one-sided confidence interval and that is one in which we will be working with the upper limit and the lower limit is set to minus infinity the upper limit how would you get this number again start with the point estimate mu hat this time move to the right these many multiples z corresponding to 1 minus alpha of your standard error how would you interpret this one-sided confidence interval very simple you are this much confident that your population mean mu is at most this much see note the difference between the keywords that we have used between the lower limit and the upper limit at least the lower limit at most the upper limit okay so this is how you would build and interpret various types of confidence intervals now let's do this let's take a look at how different types of confidence intervals can be used for the purpose of hypothesis testing again let's do this let's start with something which we already know and that is how to make use of the usual two-sided confidence interval visually speaking your two-sided confidence interval would look something like this you started with your point estimate and you calculated the lower limit and the upper limit this confidence interval please note comes in quite handy to conduct a two-tailed hypothesis test one which reads something like this null hypothesis alternate hypothesis and rejection rule okay you can conduct this hypothesis test simply by observing your sample based mu hat building your two-sided confidence interval based on the confidence at which you want to conduct this hypothesis test checking if this hypothesized value mu naught sitting in your null hypothesis is indeed in this confidence interval or not if mu naught is in this confidence interval then it means that you cannot reject the null hypothesis what does it tell us it tells us that the confidence interval can be interpreted to be a collection of all those values of mu I mean the population mean which when inserted as the hypothesized value in the null hypothesis does not lead to rejection of the null therefore I can think of all these values which are shaded as green to be safe values with respect to the null hypothesis okay mu hat does not give you strong enough evidence for all these values of mu to reject the null okay with this as our intuition let's extend what, what I've just said to the case of let's say to begin with the one-sided confidence interval which works with the lower bound visually speaking this is how this confidence interval would look like there is a lower limit but there is no upper limit it goes all the way till infinity okay very quickly also note that these two lower limits are not placed at the same point see they are not vertically below each other when I built this confidence interval I walked to the left by a multiple z corresponding to 1 minus alpha when I built this one I walked by a multiple z corresponding to 1 minus alpha by 2 I walked a lot more in this case as compared to this case okay now very quickly reason this out as to where would you use this confidence interval what type of a hypothesis test can use this confidence interval first comes first it has to be a one-sided or one-tailed hypothesis test let me quickly tell you that this confidence interval would be used to conduct this right tailed hypothesis test okay a key to remember this is that a confidence interval which is unbounded to the right would be used to conduct a right tailed hypothesis test okay 
null hypothesis, alternate hypothesis, rejection rule. How would you use this confidence interval? Again, the same logic. Take a look at your hypothesized value mu naught. If it lies in this confidence interval, which has been built in a one-sided way using this mu, mu hat, then it means you are safe. It means that mu hat, your sample-based observation, does not give you a strong enough evidence to reject this null hypothesis, which is built based on this mu naught. Okay, so you can remember this that in one sided case also this confidence interval contains or is a collection of all safe values when it comes to the null hypothesis. Very quickly, how would you use the one sided confidence interval based on the upper bound? The lower bound is not there. Okay, it's going all the way till minus infinity. You would use this confidence interval to conduct a left tailed hypothesis test okay null hypothesis alternate hypothesis rejection rule okay so the rule of thumb will be that to conduct this hypothesis test take a look at your mu naught build a one-sided confidence interval based on this mu hat check if this mu naught is in this confidence interval or not if mu naught is in this confidence interval you cannot reject the null okay so this video was about taking a look at one-sided confidence intervals and how whatever we know about the usual two-sided confidence interval can be extended to the case of one-sided confidence intervals